Welcome to this daily devotion for Monday, April 12, 2021. I'm Pastor Mark, along with Pastor Wesley. We serve the United Methodist Church of New Lenox and invite you to this time of daily devotion where we can grow in love of God and neighbor. Our theme this week is companionship with the living Lord as we move towards the third Sunday of Eastertide. Hear the invocation. Take some time. Take a breath if you're on the move. If you're at home, light a candle. Silence everything around you. Let us invite God into our presence in a special way during this time. Merciful and loving God, I come seeking quiet communion with you. In this place, apart from confusion and stress, grant me stillness of heart and quietness in thy presence. Amen. Our theme psalm this week is Psalm 121. It's short, and so I'm going to read it in its entirety. I encourage you, if there's a word or a phrase that speaks to you, write it down, underline it, take note of it, listen back, hear it again, and come back to think about it this week. What God is speaking to you. Psalm 121, a pilgrimage song. I raise my eyes towards the mountain. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. God won't let your foot slip. Your protector won't fall asleep on the job. No, Israel's protector never rests or sleeps. The Lord is your protector. The Lord is your shade right beside you. The sun won't strike you during the day. Neither will the moon at night. The Lord will protect you from all evil. God will protect your very life. The Lord will protect you on your journeys, whether going or coming, from now until forever from now. Amen. May God bless the reading of the psalm. Encourage you. If there was a word or a phrase that stuck out, take note of that right now and come back to it throughout the week. Our next scripture reading comes from Ezekiel, the prophet, chapter 36, starting in verse 22. Therefore, say to the house of Israel, the Lord God proclaims, house of Israel, I'm not acting for your sake, but for the sake of my holy name, which you degraded among the nations where you have gone. I will make my name holy, which was degraded among the nations when you dishonored it among them. Then the nations will know that I am the Lord. This is what the Lord God says. When I make myself holy among you in their sight, I will take you from their nations. I will gather you from all the countries, and I will bring you to your own fertile land. I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be cleansed of all your pollution. I will cleanse you of your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove your stony heart from your body and replace it with a living one, and I will give you my spirit so that you may walk according to my regulations and carefully observe my case laws. Then you will live in a land that I gave to your ancestors. You will be my people, and I will be your God. I will save you from your uncleanness, and I will summon the grain and make it grow abundantly so that you won't endure famine. I will make abundant the orchard's fruit and the field's produce so that you will never again endure the shame of famine among the nations. Then you will remember your evil ways and no good deeds, and you will feel disgust for yourself because of your sinful and detestable practices. Not for your sake do I act. This is what the Lord God proclaims. Let it be known to you. Be ashamed and be humiliated because of your ways, house of Israel. The Lord God proclaims, On the day I cleanse you of your guilt, I will cause the cities to be inhabited, and the ruins to be rebuilt. The desolate land will be farmed, and it won't be like it was when it seemed a wasteland to all those who passed by. They will say this land, which was a desolation, has become like the Garden of Eden. And the cities that were ruined 
ravaged, and razed are now fortified and inhabited. The surviving nations around you will know that I, the Lord, have rebuilt what was torn down and have planted what was made desolate. I, the Lord, have spoken and will do it. May God bless the reading of the prophet today. Companionship with the living God is our theme this week. And you can see God has a sense and a deep desire to have companionship with God's creation, with you and with me. Now, the prophets get intense because the people have kind of wandered off and wandered away from that. But the prophet Ezekiel reminds us, God does not do these things dependent on us. God does them because God wants to do them. And that is different from other gods in this era and other eras that the Bible was written in. There is a sense that a God's power in other cultures in this time and place was dependent on who worshipped them. That's not very different from our current idols, modern, contemporary, Western idols like celebrities. A celebrity is only popular if their fans gather around them. Things like money, fame, wealth are only important, only matter if we give them time of day, if we give them power. That is not how the Lord God acts. The Lord God is not dependent on creation. God is God regardless of what we do. And therefore, regardless of what we do, God still desires to be in relationship with us, continues to want to be in a companionship relationship, a partnership with humans. Even when we turn away, even when we fail, God remains steadfast. Our reading today comes from Meditations of a Hermit. What such a great work by Charles de Foucault. When you are sad, tired, lonely, and full of suffering, take refuge in the sanctuary of your soul, and there you will find your brother, your friend, Jesus, who will console you, support you, and strengthen you. Amen. I don't know that there needs to be too much said about that. That's a beautiful prayer in itself. But I remind you and encourage you how often when we are stressed, saddened, weary, I've been under the weather this week, how often do we act out, act our angers and our frustrations and our anxieties, how much, how often do we lash out at others? How often do we retreat in ourselves in a positive way, seeking refuge in the Lord? I encourage you, regardless of what's going on in your life, to go inward from time to time so that your outward self is like Christ, who is within. Today, we pray for those who are closest to us, family, friends, I hope you all had a beautiful Easter tide in this early Easter season. We're getting to that point now where people were probably together. COVID rates are going up. Maybe there's people in your life who are sick. Keep them in your prayers. We don't have time for judgment and accusations, but we do have always time for prayer and to love and to serve one another. Would you pray with me? Lord, we thank you for those who are closest to us, our family, our friends, those people we see and work with, our church family. It's so good to see them again, to be with them. Be with all of us. Allow us to love each other, to encourage each other, to lift up each other, and to pray for each other. We pray this in your holy name. Pray in the prayer your Son Jesus Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we end today, friends, I leave you with this benediction. O God, as I prepare to leave this quiet place, give me a sense of your power and your glory, that I may take it everywhere you send me today. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Until tomorrow, friends, may the peace of Christ be with you. Goodbye.